So we started the second day of the Wave in AI conference here in New York City uh, and started off with a fabulous presentation by Dr. Anthony Chang. Anthony, thank you so much. You thank really you. got the crowd going. It was amazing. <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm truly humbled by the caliber of your faculty and your attendees. And uh, again, we, I talked about duality. So the duality of the senior clinicians and scientists at Mount Sinai with the younger generation was inspiring for me. I, I didn't uh, need any more inspiration on my part. It's inspired by your crowd. <laughs> Thank you. But a lot of what you do is, of course, inspiring for the whole community. Uh, one thing, for example, is you're leading that international collaboration of AI centers across the globe. I think more than 70 by now, which is amazing. Thank you. So if you think, uh, if you if you look at that ecosystem, do you see differences across the globe from Australia to Asia to Europe, or is everybody doing the same thing? Um, well, again, duality-wise, there's quite a few are the same, but I think also some of the philosophies are very different. So. I see big differences between the UK centers versus the American centers, even on the East versus West Coast. Um, so I think that adds tremendous diversity to bring innovation into AI and healthcare, which is what I need uh, and what we need as a group. So I think um, it's a little bit of both. I think there's some common themes and perhaps a little too much uh, in common, but I th I'm really uh, appreciating the the tremendous diversity of approaches as well as philosophies of AI and healthcare that we desperately need. Mm -hmm. Anthony, in contrast to me and many others in that field, you are also a clinician. So you are in the clinic, I think half of your time. So you really know where AI can be applied to change clinical practice. So from that point of view, what do you think the area is gonna be where AI is gonna have impact, maybe already today or gonna have impact soon? Well, sometimes um, knowing both areas is a disadvantage because you're more frustrated <laughs> than, than probably you are. Uh, I see the tremendous potential in especially real-time decision support at a meaningful level that will hopefully someday blur the boundary between clinical practice and clinical research. Because I, I never understood, even when I was a young trainee, why we have to carve out time to do research at the mm -hmm. same time we're taking care of patients. Why can't we just do that? Again, duality is the theme together so that when you're taking care of patients, you're contributing to clinical research. So this whole concept of randomized controlled trials and, and separate time and budgets and even teams doing research always made very little sense to me that in the future with AI, bridging those two areas mm -hmm. so you can be taking care of patients while you're researching mm -hmm. for improvement of outcome will be, I think, what I'm greedily hoping will happen. That's amazing. And I know you're working actually hard towards that also on the educational front. I think there's, is there now a board for AI in, in medicine? Um, there is an educational certification um, under the American Board of AI in Medicine, which I'm very excited about. And hopefully that will be the foundation to um, a board certification for clinicians or data scientists that want to get boarded in artificial intelligence and healthcare. And I'm starting to see master's programs of AI and healthcare, which I believe uh, Mount Sinai has one, so I'm excited about that. Um, and then eventually PhD programs in this area too. So I, I see a tremendously exciting future uh, trajectory for both clinicians and data scientists who want to take what they do to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to look back 10 years from now uh, it's ten years, more than ten years since I graduated from 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 my school work. Um, I see ten years from now will be uh, thousands of clinicians and data scientists working with uh, what I call um, or bilingual. I'm bilingual, but I have an accent. <laughs> <laughs> so um, because I, even though I was a very um, had high affinity to complex math ever since I was younger, but you know wasn't. Um, educated in the current era of AI until about 12 years ago. So um, so I have an accent, but I think the generation to come will have both embedded in their education, so they'll be bilingual without any effort. Mm -hmm. So um, so I think I'm really, really excited about the, the future of uh, education of AI and healthcare. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping it'll be both directions, just like I described during the talk. I see lots of medical students 
now more excited about data science. I'm hoping more data scientists will consider clinical medicine, uh, something they do want to spend a lot of time in, either rounding with clinicians on a weekly basis or even going back to medical school. I couldn't agree more. Good. And so you're going back to medical school, Thomas? <laughs> <laughs> you're never too Maybe old. Maybe in my old days. I was in my 50s when I started my curriculum in data science. Just about broke my back. <laughs> OK, um, I, I get the hint. Uh, I think <laughs> I should brush up on my <laughs> medical knowledge. Yeah. But Anthony, thank you so much. It was really a pleasure to having you here. Uh, you're a leader in that space, and it's an honor that we could host you. Well, I'm very humbled by your comment. I'm more of a convener, but certainly uh, I see my, my two daughters growing up. One wants to be an engineer with NASA, and the other one wants to be a clinician, a data oh, pediatric cardiologist. <laughs> so I'm a reminder of that duality every day, <laughs> not just when I talk to professionals. So um, thank you for the opportunity to be here.